the one-year expat housing plan. And this is the key, the first country and the first city Will you thrive or will you survive? WTF, you retired where? Welcome to my home for the comprehensive expat housing plan. Where to go, hotel, Airbnb, condo, single family home, townhouse, do you rent it, can you buy it, should you lease it, how to lease it, what types of things to look out for, and stick around, I'll share with you some of the mistakes I made, a real disaster. You've initiated the 90 day plan. You maybe met that woman of your dreams. You're about to enter into an expat age gap relationship, or you're headed to Asia, to the country of your choice, to the city of your dreams, and now it's time to find long-term housing. Okay, how do we use the one-year housing plan? What are the beginning steps? You've come to your exploratory visit, you went to Pattaya, you came to Dumaguete, you saw Thailand, you saw the Philippines, you found out that the uh, elevation in Ecuador wasn't for you. You've zeroed in, you've met a woman, hopefully, if not, you've found out what you like and you're gonna have to pick an initial city to start. The first country and the first city, we wanna make sure that this is an initial decision, but we don't want our shoes in cement. We can change, we can find a new woman, we can find a new place to live, we can even find a new country. The number one savings in your budget, when you arbitrage your pension, when you arbitrage your retirement savings, the biggest savings is going to be housing. This house that I'm living in today with Chrissy would cost at least three times as much back in Scottsdale, Arizona, where I lived before I moved here. You see so many videos on YouTube. There's like, it's a, it's a, it should be a genre all to itself. This expat lives on 600 a month. This expat lives on 1,000 a month. This expat lives on 1,500 a month. It's definitely possible. You can do it. I just don't know whether you choose to do it. Will you thrive or will you survive? Or, you know, do you eat to live or you live to eat? Uh, you know, are you expatting to thrive or are you becoming an expat to just avoid the bill collector and live in a lower cost country? You want to have some joy and you want to thrive in your retirement. So in a country like the Philippines, and we'll use the Philippines for most of our examples because that's where I'm currently living, but I've been to Ecuador and I've been to Mexico for months at a time and I, I've been to Turkey for months at a time and I've been to Thailand for months at a time. And I can tell you that in all of these countries, you'll get tremendous savings primarily in housing. You'll get good savings in food also if you're not eating out at restaurants. Restaurants in these countries tend to cost half of what they do back home, maybe even a third of a big city. And transportation, uh, taxis and things of this nature can be very inexpensive also if you're not living out in the middle of nowhere. So housing is key and your happiness can be based on uh, quite a bit besides your girlfriend or your fiance or your wife because now you're retired. You don't get up and go to work in the morning. You don't, you're staying in that house quite a bit. You might go out to golf. You might meet the guys at the coffee shop. You might take your girl out uh, with some other couples for dinner, but you're spending way more time in your retirement home than you ever did when you were working. And other uh, people, your neighbors, they're probably all working. So uh, what is good for them they don't hear the noise, they don't see the trash in the road, they don't understand that motorcycles are going by all day, they don't know there's a neighbor with a, a, an industrial business going on because they're away at work six days a week. And when they do get home, they're pretty exhausted, they got kids to deal with, they probably close their doors, shut their windows, turn on their air conditioner, play some uh, karaoke or play some uh, TV, it blocks out all the noise, and they're exhausted, they're going to bed at 10, 10.30, and they wake up at 5, 6 a.m., and out the door they go. But not you, you're home. You're making lunch at home. You're sitting on the patio. You're, you're wanting to be home all day, uh, three days a week, four days a week. You're just home. 
And so where you live is really, really important. Since you are new in the country, renting and short-term rentals are to be prioritized to avoid very unhappy ending. If you're living with a local woman and uh, you make the mistake of purchasing the house in her name without any legal protection, such as a long-term lease agreement, you could really hurt yourself. Even with that type of protection, realize that if that woman calls the police and makes claims against you, you have very little standing and you might find yourself in a hotel for six months and not in the house you're leasing. In your first month in country after returning from your exploratory visit, the last thing you want is to be handcuffed or locked into a long-term housing situation that you are not happy with. And what could be worse? What if your wife, your girlfriend is not happy with your housing situation, but you signed a long-term lease and she gets up every morning and lets you know she's not happy? Now that could hurt. First consideration, have you met a girlfriend, fiance, future wife? What part of the country is she currently living in or working in? Where does she want to live? Does she want to be close to her parents and relatives? Does she need to be close to a job? Does she have teenage children that need to go to certain schools? This can drive your decision where to live. How important is it to be close to her family? Do they need to provide childcare? Do you need to travel and they can help watch the kids? Her happiness is gonna be the single most important thing uh, in terms of your overall happiness. The second most important is whether you like the house you're living in and the climate and the culture of the country you're living in. Where do other expats choose to live? Which are the top five cities to retire if you are a beach lover? Do you want a downtown boardwalk? Which are the top five cities to look at? How about climate? You don't like the heat of a tropical climate? Which are the top five cities for your retirement, including mountains and beaches? Do you know? Have you looked into it? Do you want to be near lots of other expats? Is that a plus? Or is that a negative? Because it doesn't really feel like you're living in a foreign country. And of course, for you golfers, where is the best place to golf? You don't need to finalize your decision. Think of yourself as a newbie with a lot to learn, a lot of people to meet, a lot of networking to happen. For the first week in the city that you've chosen is not a good time to become a cheap Charlie. Take my advice, it's only seven nights. If you spend an extra $25 a night over the long term, it's not gonna bust your budget. But it's the wrong time and the wrong place to find yourself in a dangerous neighborhood with bad infrastructure, high crime, lots of pests like bugs in your bed, bad air conditioning, and generally just in the wrong place to meet your objectives of exploring and getting to know the city. Well, option one is if you're not 100% sure where you wanna live, if your girl is flexible, if you can't live within an hour of your girl's relatives and family, so then you have more options maybe. In my situation, Chrissy's family lives in central Mindanao, which is not a good place for a Westerner full time. So it was either five hours away where we ended up in Cagayan de Oro, or I could have lived maybe in Dumaguete or Davao, also on Mindanao, uh, Makati, BGC. We went to 11 different rental properties in nine cities. Nine cities in the Philippines, 11 different properties, 10 Airbnbs and one hotel. What a trip. It was the honeymoon before the marriage. Yes, I agree. And it's so nice to experience different places and different Airbnbs. I got to know other parts of the Philippines. And one of the things that I had no clue, my biggest surprise of all my surprises when I came to Asia was I never realized that you could be at elevation. You know, I've heard people say outside Dumaguete that a lot of people live in Valencia, oh, you could turn off the air conditioner. I'm like, yeah, in the Philippines, you could turn off the air conditioner. Well, you know, I'm currently living at 750 feet in this house and we don't turn the air conditioner on until like one or two in the afternoon. We open the windows. We have a little bit of noise issues we'll talk about later, but boy, in the evening, and we spend so much time outdoors compared to the first property we rented in CDO. 100% different experience. So I didn't really know where I wanted to live. I thought I'd want to live on a beach, you know, walk up, uh, wake up in the morning, walk out on the beach. But, you know, as you get older, maybe living in the sun and the salt water and the salt air at the beach could be kind of hard 
on you and maybe that's not really what you want to do. So you need to figure out what the options are in the country that you're choosing. If it's Ecuador, are you at the elevation, you just can't handle it. You can't handle 11,000 feet. The air is just too thin for you. You're getting headaches. Is it just that the, the neighborhood's not safe enough for you or the housing choices aren't right for you? You need to really take time to explore. We ended up in this house here in a gated subdivision uh, in uh, Uptown CDO. It's at 750 feet of elevation. The Bucanon Mountains are in the distance. The breezes come blowing through. Wow, who ever knew in the Philippines you could experience anything like that? So it took a little exploration for me to learn. Actually, our first 90 days here in Cagayan de Oro, we didn't have good weather. We were in a townhouse subdivision. Now, if you don't know exactly where you want to stay, you're going to move on and explore before you come back. If you're pretty sure you want to stay in this city because your girl lives an hour away or half hour away, or she goes to college there, or you have another reason, maybe your best friend retired there and you want to be close, okay, now it's time for week two, three, and four in this new city. You've stayed in a hotel or a short-term Airbnb for the first week. Week two, three, and four, we're going to choose one week rentals maximum, three separate ones, maybe in three different parts of town, three different complexes, three different types of properties. We don't want to get locked into three weeks in the wrong property. Even in this first month, three weeks is too long. Yeah, I know nobody wants to move around, but the worst thing could be waking up every morning, hearing the screaming and yelling from the neighbors next door, five dogs barking all night long, roosters, they feel like they're in your bedroom. One week commitments maximum in month one of your plan. Try and determine what is most important to you and based on your budget, where you want to live. Now be careful, you're gonna see these prices, they're gonna be crazy low compared to where you came from, but you get what you pay for. And let me repeat that, you get what you pay for. If you take the $200 a month studio, and you have to buy your own refrigerator and buy your own couch. Yeah, you can do it for $200 a month. And in the long term, you're gonna save a lot of money. And there are some people, they can do it. They don't mind not really having any windows. So when it comes to finding suitable living arrangements, just a word of caution. These are third world countries or developing countries. They have some issues that we wouldn't normally look at or we wouldn't really see when looking at different housing options ourselves. First one is, environmental conditions. Are you going to be exposed to pollution, air pollution, pesticide pollution, uh, noise pollution, uh, other environmental factors? Uh, what type of air conditioning unit are you willing to live with? Uh, 85, 90 percent of the air conditioning units in uh, most of these countries are going to be window air conditioning units. Quite often they're noisy, they're dirty, uh, there's gaps around them where bugs and insects can come in, in and out of the bedroom at night. That'll be a lower priced thing. The split units are, uh, that use an, in, an inverter uh, are much more cost effective to run and the quality of the air conditioning you get, the ability to turn it off or turn it on based on if you're in that room or not is a really, that for me, that's the way to go. But you need to worry because in a lot of these tropical countries, expats complain about getting bacterial pneumonia. It happened to me, and I'm pretty sure I know which condo I rented. I kind of cheaped out one time and I got a really bad condo, and that air conditioning unit just was horrible. And uh, sure enough, I got bacterial pneumonia. Chrissy got bacterial pneumonia. We were miserable for a few weeks until we figured it out. I looked at a Facebook group and they said, everybody gets it. Well, I don't know if that's true or not, but I got it. So think about the type of air conditioner that you're willing to live with and, and how clean is it. Number two, you're now in another country. You're in Ecuador, you're in Thailand, you're in the Philippines. Pests and critters. And I, it could be the next door neighbors are pests, but I'm talking the creepy crawly types. You're going to see bugs you've never seen before. Now the big 800 pound gorilla in the room, noise, noise, noise. It's a type of pollution we don't think about too much in the West, horn honking, everybody driving around on a motorcycle. It's not what we're used to and we have good separation. The density levels are typically, especially if you're out in the suburbs, there's a level of noise you have not comprehended. You don't get it when you're moving from city to city to city 
And uh, you know, when you have the windows closed and the air conditioning on, and it's not your retirement home, uh, you're moving around, you're never home during the day, you don't quite get the same sense. Restaurants or bars nearby closing late, karaoke parties, business run out of the house or condo right next door with industrial equipment and noise beginning at 5.30 a.m. and ending at 2 a.m. Roosters. Did you know roosters crow not just in the morning, but all day long? I'm a dog lover, but the dog situation here where I live is insane. It's a third world alarm system. In the neighborhood we lived before this, the dog barking was absolutely insane. Even if you get a luxury condo on the 26th floor, we went to Davao, we stayed in this gorgeous luxury condo on the 26th floor right across from the Ayala Mall. We could hear roosters at 4 a.m., 5 a.m. in the bedroom. It was faint because we were up high, but we heard them. Personally, I had a corporate career and then I went into real estate and I owned a real estate brokerage. And I'll give you a rule for renting an Airbnb. Uh, 4.85 stars, 15 reviews or more. Read the reviews very carefully. Look for negative information about some of these environmental concerns. So short term, hotels are an option. Uh, certainly the first week or the first month you could do hotels. You get a little bit more security. You could always check out within a day if you're unhappy. So it's your first month. Now is a good time to join the expat communities on Facebook. Uh, let them know you're new in town. Introduce yourself. You'll have to ask to join. They'll let you join. Put a posting up, say, hey, I'm new in town. I'm uh, in a one week short term rental. Uh, I think I'm going to be living here full time. I have a girlfriend. Her family lives an hour away. Anybody have any suggestions on the best places to live? These are the things that I care about. You know, I like to golf. I want to be able to live within 10 minutes of a golf course. I like to scuba. I want to be close to the beach. I want to be in the mountains with the cool breezes. I, you know, tell people a little bit about what you want. Start to network at this time. Now, this is not a budget video, and I'm not going to show you different housing options today. You've seen lots of those on YouTube. I met an expat. He moved into his ex-mother-in-law's rooms after she passed away, and he pays $40 a month for his housing, along with his kids and wife. So you can do it if that's your cup of tea. And boy, he's saving a lot of money compared to you know what I'm spending and other people are spending. As a rule of thumb, $200 is gonna get you a bare minimum efficiency, not with any, no security, not in a very great neighborhood. That same property would cost you 400 in a good neighborhood, uh, 600 in a condo building. Uh, a one bedroom could cost you six or 700 even more in a nice condo. A one bedroom home is gonna cost you between $600 and $800 a month plus utilities. That is the market rate. Now you can find cheaper properties. Perhaps you prefer to spend your money on women and alcohol. Well, if one way to make it all happen with your budget is to go inexpensive and live like a local. There's lots of low budget opportunities there. And, but people who tell you they're great, they're wonderful, um, they're not sharing a hundred percent of the reality. Bad air conditioning, bad neighbors, bad environmental concerns, possibly a crime ridden neighborhood where it's really not safe to go out at night, and possibly the noise is out of off the charts. So now it's the 30 day mark. You're pretty sure you want to settle in. You don't want to be living week to week. You don't want to rent week to week anymore. You want to kind of settle in. Maybe you want to buy a big screen TV. You want to move your bulk buy-on boxes uh, into the uh, property. You need the right space. You want to be near your friends. You've kind of determined where you want to be. How do you proceed? After 30 days, it's time to try and find a quasi long-term condo or home to rent. In Asia, it's common for Facebook groups for rental apartments and homes to be very active. Almost all the listings in town will get posted. When I was at the point where I wanted to find a property to live in, I joined these Facebook groups. I didn't have any confidence in them and I, I was in touch with four different realtors, but I never got contacted about a property by one of those realtors that I hadn't already seen on the Facebook group. Few of these properties will offer 30 day rentals or 90 day rentals. Some will take six months. When they say a year, they'll usually take six months. However, they want two months deposit typically. And I've never paid two months deposit. I've always negotiated it down to 1.5 or even one month deposit. I always consider it a blessing 
and I have good karma if I get my deposit back in a foreign country. Chrissy and I rented initially a 90-day townhouse with an option for a one-year extension. We made an entire video. What a disaster. The roof leaked. The plumbing was a mess. The upstairs sink didn't work. The plumbing, if the toilet backed up and you made the mistake of putting a plunger in the toilet, the poop would come out the shower drain. It was disgusting. And the noise, the noise. We made this video. There was a catering company operating across the street. It had seven employees. 5.30 in the morning, they started washing silverware. 2 a.m., the last truck was dropping off after a late night party. Fortunately, we got our deposit back. But the weather was hot in that subdivision. I thought it was just, just what I expected about the Philippines, hot weather. There was no breeze at all, really. The house had patios, but nobody would go outside and use them. It was just too hot. But it was guard gated. They had 24-hour roving motorcycle security guard. And um, it had a nice community pool. You know, we walked the neighborhood. It had all brand new cars. We thought it was a great place to live. And we took a 90-day short-term lease with a one-year option. The level of dog, it was, it's hard to explain. So we decided to pay an extra uh, 10,000 pesos per month, about $183 additional per month to rent this house. No more townhouse. Those towns, it's just too noisy, too many cars coming in and out, too many motorcycle food deliveries. They didn't enforce the UHOA, so we decided, okay, we're just gonna pay more and we're gonna get a single family home. And we had one house next door and he had dogs. We came back the next day and uh, we walked the entire neighborhood. The dogs only barked at us for a minute next door. We came back by at like midday. We didn't hear any roosters, we didn't hear anything, and uh, we walked the neighborhood. We stayed two hours in the neighborhood doing a check to make sure everything was fine. Well, long story short, we had to go through this crazy orientation where they read us the rules, and the woman said that the man next to us had nine dogs, and there were chickens in a vacant lot next to his house. And I was like, I didn't hear any chickens. I didn't, and the, nine dogs, so you only allowed two. How was he allowed to have nine? Oh, he was grandfathered. Okay, so <laughs> the first night we moved in, I woke up the next morning, oh my God, the dog barking, it was crazy. I was like, I can't believe this. I can't get away from the dog barking. So I have a six month lease at where I'm at now. Love the house, love the neighborhood love the community. I can walk to coffee shops. I can walk to a chicken uh, rotisserie. I can walk and get my hair cut. I can get taxis everywhere. I have a breeze. The house is spectacular. There's no problem with the house. The neighbor next door has three roosters. They raise them for fighting. They're going all day long. But in reality, I've gotten quite used to this level of dog noise. It's nothing like the other community. However, the roosters are really an issue. And the HOA does not allow roosters. There's no roosters allowed in the neighborhood, yet they don't enforce the rules. So fortunately, we have a six month lease. We are in a little bit of a pickle. We love it here, we just love it here, but we don't wanna live next to roosters and we wanna be able to be on the patio and we wanna record some videos. So we're not sure what we're gonna do. But the point is, six months. Don't, I'm so glad I didn't take a one year lease. Uh, you know, it's, it could get worse. You could have six roosters next week. So. Um, you never know what you're going to face and you never knew if you know, who knew if the house was going to leak or the plumbing would back up or if you had other neighbor issues going on, if there's crime in the neighborhood. You, know, you never know. You just never know. And God, if you bought a property and you ran into these problems uh, or you leased it for two years because they offered you a good deal, you could find yourself in a real pinch. So the, here's my advice. Is this is probably the mistake I made and I would recommend I would I should have asked if I could have stayed here for two nights even if you know brought my own bedding slept on the couch on a weekend two nights on a weekend you'll get to know the neighborhood you'll find out the karaoke party situation you'll find out the dog situation you'll find out if there's chickens in the neighborhood you'll find out if your next door neighbor has seven employees arriving at 5 a.m. doing silverware uh, you'll find out if you can hear every noise through the windows you'll find out if the air conditioning systems work so I, if you can at all possible, get like an overnight stay or a two night weekend stay, like camping, glamping in that house. That's the only way you're ever really going to get to know the neighborhood. You'll gain a little advantage financially with a longer term lease, but you put yourself in a situation where you and your girl could be very, very unhappy. For me, having a hospital within 20 minutes, having uh, an SNR within 25 minutes, having wet market 20 minutes away, 
um, having a beach 30 minutes away, uh, being at elevation uh, 750 feet and getting a breeze and having a different climate, uh, having a place that I can walk to a coffee shop, I can walk to a, a small vegetable stand. That's important to me. Do you want to be near golf? Do you want to be near scuba? Are you a country boy at heart? Do you want to live out in the province and save money? What has been your experience finding housing as an expat? Have you found it easier to find housing in Thailand than Philippines? Uh, which cities have you found to be the dream city for you? Go ahead and share some of your thoughts. Don't be like me and have to surrender because you found yourself in the wrong housing situation. Go ahead and put the one-year expat housing plan to action. Don't commit yourself to long term. Thanks for watching. Join us for another episode of Fly Me to the Philippines. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you haven't seen the 90-day plan of action, go ahead and watch it next now.